Welcome to Drovers TV. I'm John Hamilton. And I'm Terry Apostle. Drovers TV is the latest offering from Drovers, America's beef business source. And we're here to bring you the latest cattle industry news and information. Here's a look at what's coming up on today's show. In animal health, even after cold weather, worms can be a problem. In our Drover to Drover segment, we look at some of the challenges facing producers. And we talk to Phil Reed from Purdue University's College of Agriculture. Warren Wybert owns Decatur County Feed Yard near Oberlin in western Kansas. Warren is known as a true innovator in cattle feeding. The feed yard uses electronic animal ID and automated sorting systems to fine-tune management and marketing. Warren tells Drovers TV how these systems benefit ranchers who retain ownership of their calves. We have been feeding cattle for ranchers for many, many years, since the 1980s. So we have. Uh, ranch customers throughout the United States so uh, generally in the fall of the year they'll bring us their calf crop and we'll manage those cattle individually with electronic ear tags that we apply at the feedlot to correspond back to the ranch tag so the rancher has useful information on the performance of each animal through the feed yard and uh, the uh, technology that we use was instigated in the early 90s like 1993, 94 is when we put it in and uh, we will sort the cattle to meet a marketing grid to the, to the best of their performance uh, efficiently and, and make the most money for the rancher that's possible on those cattle uh, individually. So the cattle will be sorted once in their lifetime at the feed yard and probably put into four or five different marketing groups when they are uh, reach their best harvesting time. Feed yards such as Decatur County can provide ranchers with a wealth of information on their calves, but Warren says the data is most useful when the rancher keeps good records. Well, information is valuable, okay? So, so the more information a rancher has about his herd, about his health program, birth dates and so forth, the more, the more useful that is to us or especially to him. And I would tell a rancher that with just a, uh, somewhat more effort in tagging their calves, re recording birth dates, a lot of people do that. Retaining ownership of those uh, through the feeding phase uh, gives them a chance to capitalize on the effort they've put into them. And there are certain times of the year these cattle sell to Japan more valuable than others because of supply and demand. And if they're aware of that, you know, it, it's worth quite a bit of money to them. It's worth going after. In our animal health segment, John Madey discusses parasite control with Dr. Mike Hildreth from South Dakota State University. Dr. Hildreth reminds producers that worms can be a problem even after a cold winter. In the northern climates, uh, I'm in South Dakota, and so uh, we've had a very, very uh, rough winter. Uh, it's been really cold, but uh, we've also had a lot of snow. Uh, and so when you get an early snowfall, then the uh, soil temperatures never really uh, get as low as, uh, as a normal year. Um, our, t our soil temperatures are, are, are quite good. On top of that, the worms are really designed to overwinter quite well, even under the, under the most extreme conditions we would get. And so even though the, uh, the cattle producers are out there freezing um, as they're doing chores, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, the worms are down in the soil um, and they uh, are having a very good time uh, relaxing, waiting for spring to come. Because uh, when spring comes and as the grass screens up, then, then that's their time to get busy and they will uh, immediately start climbing up on the blades of grass and uh, wait for the cattle then to consume them so that they can establish themselves as uh, adult parasites in the cattle. So, to prevent worms from causing economic losses in your herd, Dr. Hildreth offers the following advice. Treating the cows as they're going out on that, that spring pasture in, in, uh, as the grass is greening up is really the the, the optimal time to get the, uh, the best bang for their dollar. And, um, and that will affect then the populations of worms that are in the pasture, attempting then to get into the calves as the, as the calves start to graze. So, so our effort is really to, to affect the, the uh, calf population, but we can do that most efficiently by, by affecting the cow population. Switching to the consumer side, Tracy Thomas is the Director of Marketing with U.S. Premium Beef, the producer cooperative that National Beef Packing Company uses. Tracy tells Drovers TV a little about the company, export markets, and the beef products today's consumers want. 
We have over 2,400 members in 37 different states. Uh, over the, the life of the program, we've, I believe it's about $150 million premium to the cash market over the life of the program that uh, we've paid. That would equate back to about $21, $22 per head premium to what those cattle would have earned had they been marketed on the live cash market. And by getting the data back on those cattle, producers are looking, they're, they're learning what's working well in their herds, what they need to keep doing right. At the same time, they're looking at where do I need to make my improvements? We have a, a natural presentation here. It's called uh, Vintage on Display. We have another one of our brands here. It's called uh, Imperial Valley. In the other cooler, you will see uh, two different uh, uh, label presentations that would come out of our Liberal and Dodge City facility. One is called uh, Nature Source, which is a, um, it's a natural, all natural branded beef product. So from the, the minute the calf is born until uh, we put it on somebody's dinner plate, we know the history of the animal. We know that they haven't had any antibiotics or, or growth promotants. And for the market that desires that type of uh, program with our unique ownership position, we're able to supply that type of a problem that type of a program and it's worked very well. The other brand that you will see is called uh, Black Canyon and it's a, uh, a black hided low choice product that's, that's worked very well for us. This week our Drover to Drover segment features Leo McDonald, a Montana rancher who also owns the Midland Bull Test, one of the biggest and most modern bull test facilities in the United States. Leo shares some of the challenges beef producers have been facing over the past couple of years. Uh, from the ranching perspective or from the industry's perspective, you know, increasing costs are, have been quite a challenge. Uh, obviously, there's some uh, new political issues out there that we're concerned about. But, you know, I, I would say increasing costs and, uh, you know, a tighter market. We've, uh, with the economy and stuff, we've seen a decrease in demand for, you know, your more expensive proteins like yeah. beef. And, uh, you know, they're... There's always a challenge in this industry, oh, yeah. but we always uh, go out and kick over another rock and find our way. These challenges are not going away, but Leo is optimistic about the future and says producers who adapt to the changing industry will have some great opportunities. We've gone back through and, and, we, and we looked at everything, you know, both our costs and our, our marketing plans and adjusted them for the times we're in. Yeah. But also, you know, I mean, we're still looking to the future with some long-term goals and, and we are investing in the future. We're, we're actually pretty excited about what I think what's going to happen to this industry in two or three years. Uh, you know, if we kind of stay focused on improving demand and uh, taking care of our image of our product, uh, I think we're in for some very good years. Phil Reed is the Distance Education Coordinator for Purdue University's College of Agriculture. Phil is a proponent of electronic media and produces the Beef Blog and other information on Purdue's Beef Center website. This week, Phil tells us about some of the types of information producers are looking for. And the biggest thing that we're seeing now is beginning people in beef production, buying their first cattle. And uh, to that end, we actually have a YouTube page where we've done, done short 10-minute videos on the basics of getting into the beef operation, how to uh, body condition score your cows, how to use seeders, and how to use AI in, in a managed breeding program, things that a starting out beef pr producer for the first time would ask. While producers have become much more efficient in producing high-quality beef, Phil believes they must continue to produce more with less. The main thing is getting efficient. One of the heartening things that I've heard to be on the sunny side of things is we're producing more beef with less cattle, with less impact on the environment than we have ever in our history. Finally, Phil tells us what he thinks of Drover's TV. I think it's just absolutely fantastic and if it goes along with the great heritage that they've had and what they've done over the last 150 years as I had said before my dad used to watch or read every week the Chicago Daily Drovers I think this is just the next step and I, I think you folks are really ahead of the game and if it if it is half as good as your heritage has been it's gonna be wonderful Thanks so much for that, Phil. We love hearing your feedback, and we'd love to have you join the conversation here on Drovers TV. You can leave us a comment right below this video player. We'll be back in two weeks with more of the industry information you need. Until then, take care.